Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully this isn't crash and burn. That's the spirit. <laughs> Hello, Internet. It's the yeah. Uncultured Saints. On uh, that Perfect. awkward note, I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me today is Pastor Litzo. It's uh, my kid. Talk- it's your kid. I, uh, no, yeah, I said I said a kid. I, I, we should probably make sure everybody knows it's my kid. I'm watching so you didn't my kidnap kid. a kid and like the ransom's about to. Right, and then the mom's gonna come and we're gonna do an exchange. And, and by, by mom, caught. also the police. Um, right. right. Is it the right. ones who sit out behind your church and catch speedy? Do you think, or, or does this warrant somebody a little? No, more no, 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 no. We, we need like special, uh, special uh, super cops. Uh, to do for, sting operations, right? For you, though, <laughs> probably not, <laughs> right? The, the the motorcycle cop they they tipped him off because they were mad at me because I chased him off of my get off of my porch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are things go, buddy? Things go good. Uh, things are, things are going all right. I, I have a pretty routine week until we started talking, and then it just gets weird and uncomfortable. And, so. Uh, right. Let's talk Good. about something less weird and uncomfortable, like sin and and the law, I guess. And and the law, that's not uncomfortable at all in any way, shape, or form, nor is sin. No, it usually makes me feel pretty good about myself because I am so great. Yeah, and the law uh, has nothing to say uh, against me. It's what I like about this. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're done. Great show, everybody. Uh, so we're studying these small called articles, and uh, Luther would disagree with us, and uh, probably in, in a bitter and angry fashion. Right. Um, yeah, he would he would call us papists, I think. Uh, probably other things too. <laughs> yeah. Um, last last time uh, you said uh, maybe you said this uh, while we were recording, or maybe you said this beforehand, but you were excited to get to the third part. We're starting the third part now. Because you, you said that's when the fun stuff begins. Yeah. Uh, you want to elaborate on that? So the the first uh, part, and, and really the second part that lays out the chief article, uh, starts to talk about, you know, stuff that, it, it's, it's arbitrary a little bit in the lives of average people today because, like, you in, in high school are not considering a life in the monastery, uh, nor have you probably taken a pilgrimage to see relics of the past or anything like that. Um, we, we can sort of make jokes about how the Pope talks, but also uh, it's, it's, it's here we're going to talk about and what he stuff. does in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Here we're going to start to talk about where it, it actually applies. So if um, the if if it is the chief article justification, Jesus was crucified for sinners. Um, well, then I better be a Hold sinner on. if I want Jesus to be crucified for me. Sorry, I apologize. But before we run down that path, because you did say, and and we don't have to spend an awful lot of time on on this. It just popped into my head though. You did say most of us probably have not uh, gone on a pilgrimage to go see a relic. And I would say that's probably true. Uh, but even with, I would say within like the evangelical type churches, um, and even within some Lutheran churches, um, don't we, isn't it dangerous sometimes how we view Jerusalem? Ooh. Um, short answer is yes. Okay. Um, the long answer is yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, mean, if you think there's more Jesus in Jerusalem than in your church, you're doing church wrong. Um, if right. you think there's more Jesus in uh, Jerusalem because the churches there are older, you're doing church wrong. Jesus is present where the word is preached and the sacraments are administered, and that is enough for the church. Right. Uh, if, if you maybe just have a real hard time with geography and it would help you see it and maybe imagine it better when you're talking about when Jesus went, you know, down from Galilee or, or whatever, which hither way he went. Can just, right gonna slide hither. the word hither right in there yeah. uh that might help um but yeah I, I i don't think it i think it could be edifying i think it could be beneficial to go actually see for lack of a better term and the holy land i guess that's how we term it now um just so that we can visually see the very things and uh where jesus walked but i i i fear that sometimes uh, some maybe even within lutheran circles and evangelical 
uh, you know, big box church type things do kind of see the Holy Land as better and, and that we do have to make a pilgrimage there uh, so that we can uh, get baptized in the Jordan because the Jordan River is so much better than your baptismal font and so that we can see uh, uh, the, the tomb, one of three that Jesus was laid in, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do go out there and, and, and have this kind of uh, uh, ideology sometimes. Um, but I guess that's neither here nor there. We're talking about sin and law. Um, I just wanted to bring that up because it popped in my head, and and I thought that would be an awkward segue. So there you go, buddy. Cheers. Um, so <laughs> what... <laughs> I, I like the uh, the small cold articles about sin because they also don't take the approach that normal people would take, like you. Um, so there, are, I, there are sins that you don't need to be a Christian to recognize as sinful. I, I think we just need to recognize this. There are things that are universally appalling and wrong. Um, they're getting they're getting less and less. I, 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 yeah, it, it, I, well, it, but. But in today, I, 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 I guess Back I don't want to play devil's... Back in the 1900s, things were simpler. I don't simpler. want to play devil's advocate, but uh, the youth of, of 2022 do live in a different uh, society in which the things that were deemed blatant sin that 95% of uh, society, whether uh, Christian or not, would sit there and say, no, that's evil. Uh, I think it's getting less now. Okay, so I, I mean, yes, I, I'm not going to disagree with you that, uh, that that there are certain crass sins that have become very normalized in culture. Um, there's a lot we could talk about, about gender identity, about sexuality, uh, about Roe versus Wade, which is, um, a, at least as we're recording this, uh, really up in the air right now. Right. Um, but like, let's also go to the ones that I think um, would be a little bit more unanimously understood there's also a war going on right now in part of the world and there are pictures of awful things happening to kids there, there's tragedy all around and you can look at this and say this is broken right you, you know and it's, you don't and need it's to almost universally understood yeah right. to, to look at a kid standing in the rubble where his family used to live um and, and say something not right happened here you don't you can argue about the vocabulary but this this is one of those universally utterly disgusting things and, and i i think um honestly there there's a case to be made for the rest of the ten commandments too that uh nobody actually wants to live in the part of town where they're more likely to get murdered nobody wants to go to the high school where everybody's going to gossip about them you you want to have a place to put your stuff where it's not going to get stolen um and if you've ever been a part of a broken marriage or or bear, born witness to divorce close to you the sixth commandment matters too uh right. but but the the small cold articles actually start with the place we would never see it apart from the scriptures, and that is that the the, the real um, the the real fruit, um, or, or excuse me, the, the the real root of this is uh, unbelief, false faith, idolatry, being without the fear of God, pride, despair, utter blindness, and and in short, not knowing or regarding God. That that really where the the one sin that you're going to not know you're committing until the scriptures open it to your eyes is not knowing who God is. The first commandment, yeah, you shall know that's, God. Well, yeah, the, the the first table of the law, right? The the first three commandments are the ones that we really do have to have scripture show that to us. And then once that's been made known to us, we can we can actually see how much and how egregiously we we break the second table of the law, four through ten. Uh, mm -hmm. The ones in regards to our neighbor too, but uh, I, I like how you put that up. I, uh, I was studying this uh, this article with uh, with my elders uh, just this week, um, and it's really interesting because you can have that conversation. And I'm sure some of uh, our listeners have had this conversation before. I know that I have, where we're trying to um, distinguish uh, with maybe an unbeliever or an unchurched individual, uh, uh, and we're trying to talk about sin. And the ability to uh, uh, to keep the law or not keep the law or, and all that sort of thing, and, and inevitably that it usually falls on. Well, I'm a pretty good person, and, and I can list the amount of sins that I do or don't do. And and we're talking about the egregious ones. Um, and again, the egregious ones and and the ones that are visible and the ones that we can see. That's not. It's not what Luther talks about here, and that's not what we talk about when we're talking about sin or concupiscence. That's a big, fancy word of just basically original sin that we've inherited down. Um, right, to, to want to do bad things. 
Right. Well, and it's even more of a more than just a desire to do bad things because that's how Rome talks about it, right? Rome will just talk about it as just the inclination or the desire to do bad things to sin, but not it's not sin in and mm-hmm. of itself. And, and and Luther and we would say scripture uh, completely and utterly disagrees with that and says no, no, no. It is sin. Um uh, this this concupiscence, this original sin that we've inherited, just wanting to do is, bad things is is sin, yeah, is sin in and of itself. Um, but again, it's 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 weird because you can have that conversation, um, and and we and I think we've had uh, we've talked about this before in our podcast at some point. We, you and I, will be able to agree that you don't have to uh, be a Christian to not uh, stab somebody in the eye with a fork. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, generally speaking, like the the uh, the temporal or the uh, horizontal, uh, sorry, um, yeah, the horizontal sins that we commit against each other, um, like you fork don't necess- right, like fork stabbing. Uh, you don't have to be a Christian uh, to 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 be able to fulfill those. Um, but again, that's not what this is talking about. This whole original sin, this whole sin in, of, in and of itself, uh, the the concupiscence, the uh, the diseased nature that we have, um, is the fact that we can't fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Right, and this is also going to shape how we speak to the world about those sins that we disagree about too. Right. Like, let's recognize this. There are those universally um, uh, un- just appalling sins um that that we we all can recognize and agree on and there are those that the church will very very strongly disagree with the rest of the world on and this also maybe paints a picture that you're not going to convince somebody that christianity is true based on the conviction that they feel for their same-sex attraction when all the world tells them it's fine that that if you want them to actually understand our approach to the sixth commandment it can't just start with talking about the sixth commandment over and over again until they feel sorry there's actually right. going to have to be an understanding of who god is before the sixth commandment can ever actually speak right there has to be an understanding of what good is and what evil is what what are the things of life and what are the things of death and apart from uh god the true god the triune god uh, and apart from uh christ incarnate and what he did for us um that that can't register. Not really. Um, although I guess you can make some natural law arguments uh, towards things like natural marriage and towards things about uh, sanctity of life. Well, but see, that's the whole um, point of natural law is that there, there are trends, but it also breaks down because nature has been broken by sin. And right. that's only something that we know from that first table of the law, from the scriptures. Right. Exactly, from scripture itself. So what is, what's Luther contending with then? When, when he's writing uh, out this article, right? This is the third part, uh, just, just a, a 30 second um, clarification and, and wrap up with, with everything that we've talked about kind of beforehand. Uh, this is Luther, what he a- appears or thinks to be his last will and testament. He's sending this off uh, to the Pope himself. Um, and uh, he, he's just, there's no holds barred. So what is he, what is he contending in, in this article about sin? That this kind of hereditary sin that cannot know God apart from the scriptures, it is, it is such a deep corruption of our nature that reason isn't going to be able to get its head around it. If you actually want to understand what sin is, you can't look to things you can reason or things you can see. You, you look to the scriptures and say, this might break stuff that I might not even be able to connect the dots on because that's what sin does. It, it, it breaks stuff. And so I am, am so selfish that I don't even notice all the people that I hurt in my life because I'm me, um, actually need something to point it out to me. The scriptures point beyond reason, which I can justify all the stupid things that I did because it sounded like a great idea at the time, but the scriptures speak louder. They're, they're God's word. And in trusting God, we can actually say, all right, maybe he's right about this stuff since I can't, you know, see the whole universe and understand it at once. Right. And, and so Rome had this issue during that time and, and it, it crept in a couple of centuries even beforehand, um, where they were uh, taking their understanding of Scripture, but they were also uh, taking their understanding of the church fathers. And sometimes the church fathers contradicted each other, and they had to kind of realize, oh, well, how are we going to rectify the church fathers contradicting each other? Um, well, we'll, we'll help, uh, what will help that is, is philosophy, um, particularly uh, kind of like Aristotle's uh, philosophy. 
Um, and so Aristotle's, uh, we're not going to get into it all, but Aristotle's got these uh, 10 kind of lines of reasoning in, in order to get yourself to the truth. And I say all this because during Luther's time, and even I think it's true still today, where we have uh, religion and then we have philosophy, logic and reason, and we combine the two together. And Luther was dealing with uh, the people at Rome there, uh, kind of having philosophy and reason over and above scripture. So that if the two contended against each other, uh, philosophy and reason, logic and reason was going to was gonna trumpet uh, and, and allow, okay, now we're going to understand scripture through philosophy and reason, which is how in regards to this article then, uh, you could get to the point where you could say, yeah, logically, I'm a pretty good person. Logically, uh, I don't sin that much. I mean, just look at me. We can, we can all sit here and we can point to somebody who's worse than us. And we can point to somebody who's better than us, right? We've got the whole list of saints there, right? And then we can also point to all the really, really bad people. And logic and reason will show this. So with that being said, logically speaking, I can kind of be a good person. Okay, so who's smarter, you or God? Well, and that's what Luther's talking about here. Luth Luther's contending that very thing. Right. Luther's saying, now wait a minute, Rome. Um, and, and we don't have to just be bashing on Rome because I think this plays out in today's uh, society, secular society, and in our own inclination. Uh, but Luther says, no, the, listen, logic and reason is going to get you to the, that exact place. Philosophy is going to get you to that place where you can justify your actions and you can think that you're a good person, if not a really good person. And yet scripture and God says something different. That innately you're not. Innately that you are uh, diseased from conception with this, with this original sin that is sin. And so you don't just have an inclination to sin, which you do, but you kind of are of sin. Right. And that means then that, that apart from uh, God working good down here, essentially, we, and, and we could call that grace, um, that man would not do good at all. Uh, correct. Especially, or at least in the eyes of God. I, I mean, at least in the eyes of God, certainly. But but even just sort of among our, ourselves, like God in his mercy has a way of actually sort of making even sinners dance to his His will. Um, and, and you can see it in the, the large places where, you know, um, you have Caiaphas, the priest who does not believe in Jesus saying the, the right sermon, it's better that one man should die for the sake of the people. But you even have just sort of the utter selfishness that actually finds a reason to do things that are proper, if only for selfish reasons. Um, like the evolutionists will, will stand here and say the reason that parents uh, don't care for their children is not that it's good to love your children. It's just that they want to see their bloodline passed on. And if it's true and utterly selfish, they're still taking care of their kids. That's sure. not pleasing to God that they do it out of this selfishness, but their kids are getting fed and that's good. Like we, we can't denounce that. Yeah. You're going to have to keep going. Cause I don't, I, I'm not trying to be a tool. I just, I, so where are you going with that? So this is a question of sort of the, the placement of the heart. Um, so, so I think it's, it's easy to sort of break this down into things that are good and things that are evil in terms of things that help me and things that don't help me. And that tends to be how most people do it. So it, it, it would be evil to starve a child and it would be good to, to feed a child. This is basic humanism, right? That, that the things that are good for my tribe or people or uh, clan are, are good and the things that that hurt us um are, are bad which is why you have two sides on a war both saying they're the right side because well according to humanism they're both on the right side right. uh we have something more concrete namely the scriptures that actually speak about absolute goods and absolute evils but really if if it comes to how we interact with this we have to talk about the heart is the heart something that can uh, desire the things of god on its own or just desire the things of tribe um because you can all on your own, apart from Christ, desire the things that are healthy for your tribe, but that doesn't necessarily make them good. Uh, we, we rather would say to desire the things of God is not just to take care of your kids because it's good for your genetic bloodline, but rather uh, it, 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 is, it is to desire the things of God is to see his will done, namely that 
fathers love their children, mothers love their children. Right. That that life itself is protected and nourished and nurtured, right? Yeah, it, it, it's weird because I, I like how you said it's the it's the the desires or the things of the heart then, because from the outside looking in, um, you Maybe can have become. right. You can have two different individuals with two different understandings of who God is and who Christ is for us. Um, still doing the same exact thing outwardly. And, and God be but, praised for that. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, it, it's yes. not, it's, it's, no, it, you're right. It, if atheists Especially get to temporally charity, speaking. thank God. Really? Yeah. Right. I, I think we, I think we talked about this, uh, at, at a different, uh, podcast and, and I asked, uh, uh, what's the difference between, uh, me giving, uh, somebody a, uh, sandwich who's hungry and an atheist. And you said, maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. How about we just uh, uh, take a look at it from God's perspective? Temporally speaking, that man got to eat two meals, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when it comes to the now, things of salvation, I want to look at Jesus and the cross. I, I don't right. want to look at either of your works because that neither is going to work. Right. Especially towards salvation. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, but once we have the understanding of salvation, once we have that that understanding of yes, we are sinful, uh, yes, we can't do any of this on our own. Um, yes, we can't. And yes, no, we can't. Yeah, that's better. Um, and that Jesus has done it all for us, and uh, His act of righteousness, fulfilling the law, His passive righteousness, giving that to, uh, that to us, and all of that. Um, then and only then can we understand salvation. Then and only then. Uh, can our can our hearts actually be turned by the working of the Holy Spirit? And then, and only then, can we actually talk about that sandwich becoming a good fruit? Sandwiches don't turn into fruit, kids. What about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? That didn't. There's fruit. There's fruit in that. Yeah. Okay. You win. Well done. Uh, <laughs> count it. Um... <laughs> That was easy. All right. Yeah, all right. So since you're doing so well, uh, is there anything else in sin that you want to talk about? Uh, well, there's tons of sin I want to talk about. but uh, Like other people's. No. Um, but Yeah, exactly. But this, this is because they're the worst. Let me tell you. Um, but no, I think we're good. I think we, I think we hit that pretty, pretty well. Uh, so now on to the law. And again, these tie, on, uh, these tie to each other. Um, I think uh, sometimes when we're reading scripture or sometimes when we're reading uh, our Lutheran Confessions, the Book of Concord, we, we want to take these articles and, and let them just stand on their own. And I think when we went through uh, the formula of Concord uh, way back in season one, that was uh, not the best of seasons. Um, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, we still don't. This isn't a good season either. Hey. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, but we, our, our hope was that we were showing how everything was connected and they started with that first one and then everything's connected to that, the, the correct understanding of that first one. So if you have the misunderstanding of, of article number one, you're going to have a misunderstanding of article two, three, four, and so on. Uh, it's this domino effect. Uh, and the same thing is true here. If you don't correctly understand what sin is, uh, this concupiscence, this, uh, entire, um, diseased nature that we have inherited that truly is sin and that we do not have the ability uh, to be good people in and of ourselves. Uh, if you don't have that understanding, then you're going to see the law differently. And you're going to see the law differently uh, whether or not you're uh, a, uh, a Roman Catholic or a supposed Christian um, who has a misunderstanding of sin or whether you're an atheist. So, so let's go, uh, I'm going to ask you from that perspective, from somebody who doesn't have the uh, appropriate or correct scriptural understanding of sin and sinner, then what is the law's most important purpose? Show me how to behave. Right. Exactly. Which again, uh, if we're talking logic and reason, that makes a whole lot of sense. Until I mean, you that, look around. Because, like, that's the problem, right? I, I, I recognize that God's law was uh, I at least uh, at first given to restrain sin by threats and uh, dread and punishment and promise, you know, good things to the people who follow it. But then you look around the world and you realize, well, nobody seems to care. Everybody's doing bad stuff. And things are pretty all around awful. Well, but hold on. Um, 
yes, when you're looking at the world and at the time of this recording, we're, we're still in the middle of uh, a, a war with Russia and Ukraine, and we get that. Um, and, and there's atrocities that are happening there. Um, but still, God's law is doing its, its uh, first work there, uh, or its first use, as we as Lutherans call it. Um, because the world isn't in complete and utter anarchy. You're right. It should be worse so, than it is, but it's also not working right. great. I, I, and the, the uh, small cult articles even say this, too, that this failed right. because of the evil that sin has worked in humanity. It, it's it's right. only going to work so well, y'all. Right. So, and that's, so that's the very thing. Uh, the, the threat of punishment uh, is going to keep uh, the world out of anarchy, but it isn't going to produce a good world. It's just going to help to preserve a uh, not uh, horrendous world, mm-hmm. but right? Because that, that's that... that's as far as that's as far as threats of punishment can go. Just think of you as a kid, um, and uh, the way in which you cleaned your room. Uh, I threw all the junk if, under the bed. Right, especially if it's uh, clean your room or you're grounded, you throw all the junk under the bed. Yeah, or. Passionate. Right. Or if it's uh, something else, it's it, maybe you're actually earning an allowance or maybe you've got some friends over or so, and you're, you're cleaning your room because you actually care about something, uh, you're going to do a better job. But if it's only out of threat of punishment, uh, you're going to do the, uh, the least amount of work that you have to do. Right. Um, but this is, is actually where uh, even while outwardly it looks like the law is failing, it's it's succeeding uh, because the law then increases the trespass for by the law we are actually made to be worse sinners right made to be worse sinners and we realize if we have the appropriate understanding of the law we realize that we're worse sinners too yeah that's right. a that's a strange thing that the law actually uh increases the trespass. Sin. It's a Bible yeah. verse, though. So I know. Gonna, I don't like it. It's it. uncomfortable. I, I don't like it. No, it makes perfect. Like, I, I, again, so once scripture rules, then reason can follow. So it, it's not that reason is bad. It's just that God is smarter than you. So here's scripture. Here's your brain and not the other way around. Um, and so it's the bed that, that I hit all my junk under. It actually makes perfect sense. So now when I was told clean my room and the law actually increased the trespass, not only did I do a poor job cleaning my room, but I actually then became a liar and uh my room was actually messier by the time it was done because the stuff that was sort of organized on the floor is now just sort of all crammed under there right Mm -hmm. yeah i'm just deceiving my parents that's all i'm doing that's naughty yeah oh man you just uh you just made a lot of people mad that sounds that that (laughs) but i mean that uh, when when you do have that understanding of the law uh that uh, the proper knowledge of the law does, in fact, then uh, in, increase the sin. My goodness, your hope of, of not being uh, that bad of a sinner goes completely out the window. Right. It actually then it, it becomes a, a different kind of hope in the law now, um, because now if you're actually recognizing you can't save yourself by these works, uh, it's not that you, you want to see more stuff broken. It's not that you, you want to, to be a bigger sinner, but that you actually want the law to do its job and point you away from yourself more because those are the things that aren't going to work. Right, right. So if the first use of the law doesn't uh, perfectly clean things up uh, and because of my sin uh, and my my sinful nature, uh, having the law tell me what to do uh, Again, intrinsically as a sinner, uh, I'm only doing it uh, not out of uh, the kindness or the goodness of my own heart, but I'm doing it out of threat of punishment or I'm doing it out of the hopes that maybe I will uh, be able to uh, uh, earn something. I don't know. Uh, all of that is not and does not actually produce um, the best possible thing that we would think it would or that we would hope it would. Uh, but instead, like you said, uh, now the law is actually doing its proper work, right? Mm-hmm. Not its alien work, not its uh, byproduct work of, of, of keeping the, uh, uh, the world out of chaos, uh, but its proper work, which is showing us 
how dreadfully sinful we actually are. Right, showing us how very low our nature has fallen. And that's that's a good thing to recognize once in a while. Yeah, or, 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 every day. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and like, honestly, it's, it's, it's a, you're being a little coy, but also you're completely right. Because given half a chance, I will still try and crawl back out of this hole myself. And because my nature actually hasn't changed, even though I want it to, I'm just trying to crawl over the top of somebody else and stand on them to look better. That, that hurts more people. Right. Right. Um, again, by, by nature, sinful and unclean, that's who I am and that's what I'll do. Mm -hmm. um, and if left to my own devices, I will continually go back to that. I will continually uh, hope that, okay, well, uh, now I've gotten, uh, I've, I, I've gotten pulled out of this pit enough that I can make it the next three feet up to the top. I got it from here. Jesus. Thanks. LOL. <laughs> as I as I uh, do a swan dive off the side back into the pit, thinking that I'm flying. Right, but this is actually like this is the whole point of it. If um, if you were on a train that was about to crash, would you want to know, or would you just want to be left alone in it? If, if getting off the train was a perfectly viable option, I I I, I would want to get off know. the train. Okay, you get uh, you got to keep going. I don't know where you're going with that. Well, so this is uh, the road that we pave straight to hell based on our good intentions and best. Okay, efforts. gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, and, and hell was metaphorically the train. The train, right? Choo -choo. Yeah. No. Choo -choo. Train keep a rolling all night long. So, right. the the point then of the law then is to re reveal original sin with all of its fruit, and then from original sin, actual sin becomes easier to deal with. Uh, it, it becomes easier to to mark and avoid. But we Recognize, actually have to yes. start with original sin. So that first and foremost, again, you are not God. There's a different God than you. Um, and so if you are not God, then the best ideas that you have might not be the best ideas that there are. The best intentions that you have might not always yield the best results. And quite frankly, your, your perception of right and wrong might sometimes be flawed because you're the only one you're thinking about. And so here, once we start to recognize that you are not God, that the, the first table of the law exists then again, we can go back to the second table of the law. Everybody always wants to start with the, the icky sins and, and then sort of work backwards. And I think this is, it, it goes poorly. This, this only shows why. Like if, if somebody's right. first and only interaction with Christianity is their view on homosexuality, how is that going to crash and burn? Right. It, it does all the time. Right. Yeah. And, and, and unfortunately, even sometimes for Christians, that, that, that's where we want to start too. We want to. We want to start with. Okay, let's. This let's, is what uh, you're doing wrong right now, and I'll make you a better Christian when I tell you about it. Or, or yet, yeah, right? Or let. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna weed out my really bad ones, right? I'm gonna weed out the fifth commandment stuff. Make sure I don't stab anybody in the eye with a fork. I'm gonna weed out that. Uh, yeah, uh, as opposed to whoa, let's uh, let's first see why we are so dreadfully sinful. Oh, it's because that I can't fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Right. Okay. That's, that's a different starting point. Right. Um, and, and so we need to actually start in the right place if we're going to finish in the right place. And so uh, that actually helps us deal with the law. The law is, is not the finish. It's, it's the starting place. We, we start with the law that we would be driven ultimately to the gospel. And I think that's what we're going to talk about next time when we hit repentance, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And again, I think we'll we'll touch on the fact that if you have the wrong understanding of sin, you have the wrong understanding of law, which means then you will inevitably have the wrong understanding of what repentance is and how it actually works in your life. But if you have the, the scriptural proper understanding of sin, the law, then you will actually or hopefully have the, the, the proper understanding of repentance too. Right. So um, I, I think next time we'll pick up with repentance and whatever other sarcasm you want to fling at me. That sounds appropriate. Bye. <laughs>